Hello, my name is Paul Stryer, an architecture consulting engineer with Cisco Systems. Today's lab is the ultimate hands-on Cisco WebEx Meeting Server Lab. Cisco WebEx Meeting Server is a highly secure, fully virtualized, behind-the-firewall conferencing solution that combines audio, video, and web conferencing in a single solution. Cisco WebEx Meeting Server is a virtualized, software-based solution that runs on Cisco UCS, x86 servers, and VMware. In this video, we are going to demonstrate the deployment of a 50-user Cisco WebEx Meeting Server system with high availability and external access using the Internet Reverse Proxy. Also, the administration of the Cisco WebEx Meeting Server system will be demonstrated, including user and LDAP configuration, branding, NFS configuration for backup, and more. In the previous video, Part 1, the ultimate Cisco WebEx Meeting Server hands-on lab, we demonstrated the deployment of a CWMS 50 user system with external access. This was demonstrated by deploying a CWMS admin virtual machine and an internet reverse proxy. Once deployed, we demonstrated how to pair the primary and secondary CWMS system to obtain a highly available system. In this video, we will learn how to configure Cisco Unified Communications Manager to integrate it with Cisco WebEx Meeting Server. We will demonstrate how to configure security profiles, SIP trunks, route groups, route lists, route patterns, SIP route patterns, translation roles, UC services, and service profiles to allow Cisco Jabber access to the integration with CWMS. This lab topology represents the system configuration for this lab. Notice the topology is broken up into three sections, internal, DMC, and external. The Cisco Unified Communications Manager, Presence Server, Unity Connect, and Active Directory are all completely installed and configured before this video was recorded. Please stop the video to take time to familiarize yourself with this topology and restart the video when you are ready. In this video, we will demonstrate the steps to integrate Cisco Unified Communications Manager with Cisco WebEx Meeting Server. Let's begin. As you can see, we've accessed Cisco Unified Communications Manager administration web page. Enter the administrator username and password and click login. First, we will configure a SIP profile. A SIP profile comprises a set of SIP attributes that are associated with a SIP trunk, a SIP endpoint, a SIP profile, including information such as name, description, timing, retries, call pickup, URI, port address, and so on. Click System, Security, and SIP trunk security profile to access the security profiles. Click Find to see the default security profiles. In this lab, we will use a non-secure SIP trunk profile, click it, and click copy. We will create two security profiles, one called CWMS Load Balancer. The CWMS Load Balancer security profile will keep the port of 5060. When ready, click Save. To create the second one, we will click the Copy to copy the first one and edit the settings accordingly. We will rename this one CWMS Application Server and we will change the port to 5062 and then click Save. In this lab, we will use four SIP trunks, two to the load balancer trunks for call-in, and two SIP trunks for the SIP redirect refers to the application server. Click Device, Trunk, and click Add New. For trunk type, select SIP Trunk and click Next. For this lab, we will enter a name of CWMS LB01, 
a description of CWMS Load Balancer 01 and select Default. Next, scroll down to the destination section and enter the IP address for the primary Cisco WebEx meeting server administration mach virtual machine. For the load balancer, we will leave the port at 5060. For the SIP trunk security profile, we select CWMS load balancer. The SIP profile will select standard SIP profile and click save. Click Reset, click Reset again, and then click Close. Now we will create the second load balancer SIP trunk. Click Add New. For the trunk type, select SIP trunk and click Next. For this lab, we will enter CWMS LB02 for the name, CWMS Load Balancer 02 for the description, and select a device pool of default. Scroll down to the destination address and enter the IP address for the second Cisco WebEx Meeting Server Administration Virtual Machine. Leave the port at default 5060. Enter the SIP trunk security profile of CWMS Load Balancer, the SIP profile of standard SIP profile, and click Save. Click OK on the warning and then as we did before, select Reset, Reset again, and click Close. To create the third SIP trunk, click Add New, select SIP Trunk from the trunk type, and click Next. For this lab, we will name it CWMS AppServe01. The description will be CWMS Application Server 01, and for the device pool, we'll select Default. Scroll down to the destination address and enter the IP address for the Cisco WebEx Meeting Server Media Server. L select the port of 5062, the SIP security profile of CWMS App Server, and the SIP profile of Standard SIP Profile. Click Save, click OK, reset the trunk by clicking Reset, click Reset again, and click Close. Click Add New for the fourth and final SIP trunk, select SIP trunk from the trunk type, and click Next. For this lab, we will call it CWMS App Serve 02. The destination will be CWMS Application Server 02, and the device pool will be default. Scroll down to the destination address and enter the IP address of the Cisco WebEx Meeting Server HA Media Server, or the second one, and enter a port of 5062, a SIP trunk security profile of CWMS App Server, and a SIP profile of SIP Profile. Click Save, click OK, click Reset, Reset again, and click Close. To list all four of the SIP servers, click Go on the related links, and click Find. Next, we will add the necessary routing to route to the Cisco WebEx meeting server. Select Call Routing, Route Hunt, Route Group. Click Add New. For this lab, we'll enter the name CWMS underscore LB underscore RG. Select Top Down. Select the device CWMS LB01. Click Add to Route Group. Then add the second CWMS 
LB02 and click Add to Route Group. Next, click Save. Click Call Routing, Route Hunt, and Route List, then click Add New. For the slab, we'll enter CWMS underscore RL. The description will be CWMS Load Balancer Route List. Select the Manager Group of Default and click Save. Click the Add to Route Group button. And from the Route Group dropdown, select CWMS underscore LB underscore RG and click Save. Click OK on the warning. Next, click Reset. Reset again, and then Close. Click Call Routing, Route Hunt, Route Pattern, and then click Add New. Enter the route pattern that will be used to access your Cisco WebEx meeting server. In our case, we will enter 2999. Select the Gateway Route List of CWMS underscore RL and click Save. Click OK on the warning. Click OK again. Select Call Routing, SIP Route Pattern, and click Add New. Enter the fully qualified domain name for your Cisco WebEx Meeting Server Administration Virtual Machine. Enter a description, in our case we'll enter CWMS App Server 01 SIP Redirect. Select the CWMS underscore App Server 01 as your route list, and click Save. Click Copy to create the second SIP route pattern to the HA Cisco WebEx meeting server. Update the fully qualified domain name to match the second server. Update the description to match the second server. And update the SIP trunk route list to match the second uh, server. And then click Save. Next, we will enter a translation rule by going to Call Routing translation rule and clicking add new. Enter the appropriate E164 number for the translation pattern. Enter a description in the call ed, call ed, transformation mask, enter xxxx and click save. Next, we will create conference capabilities to enable users to create and attend meetings from the Cisco Jabber client. From the menus, select User Management, User Settings, and UC Services and click Find. You will notice that there are some services already created. Click Add New. From the drop down menu, select Conferencing and click Next. Select WebEx for the product type, enter an appropriate name and description, enter a fully qualified domain name for your Cisco WebEx meeting server, port 80, HTTP for the protocol, and uncheck SSO if you are not using SSO and click Save. Click Copy to create the HA version of the UC service. Update the name and description to match the second, and update the frequently qualified domain name to match the second server. Click Save. From the menus, select User Management, User Settings, Service Profile, click Find, 
In our case, we'll select Student Service Profile. Scroll down to Conferencing and select the two newly created services and click Save. Let's open Jabber on a workstation and see if our newly created conferencing applies to the Jabber client. Once Jabber is open, select File and Options. Select Meetings, Set Up Account, and you will notice that the name that we created is now showing in our Jabber client. This concludes part two of this video series. Please move on to part three of the video series where the end user usage of Cisco WebEx Meeting Server will be demonstrated. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, thank you for using Cisco Systems.